Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International A Level, Biology Unit 2 for January 2022. This is the part 1 video. I'll put the link to the part 2 video below in the description box. Let's begin with the first question. Here they say, was classified organisms into a three domain system? Plant cells were classified into the eukarya domain. The diagram shows an incomplete cell from a plant. So they drew for us an incomplete cell here and they said, complete the diagram by drawing an ameloplast, a chloroplast, and the tonoplast to show their location and relative size in this cell. They wanted us to label these three structures. So the biggest one is going to be the tonoplast, as you can see, because this is the membrane surrounding the vacuole. And then we have the chloroplast here. And lastly, the ameloplast. So moving on, here they say the photograph shows an organelle found in a plant cell as seen using an electron microscope. So they say state the function of this organelle. This organelle is the Golgi apparatus and it modifies and packages proteins. Sometimes you could say it also processes and packages lipids that are going to be excreted mainly out of the cell. Next they say the other domains in the three domain system are archaea and bacteria. Complete the table to show in which of the domains the following structures will be found. So here we have archaea, bacteria, eukarya, and then we have more than one domain. The cell membrane is of course going to be found in more than one domain. The nucleolus is going to be found in eukarya only because these have a nucleus. The cell wall is also going to be found in more than one domain because eukaryas do have a cell wall as well. The 70S ribosomes are also going to be found in more than one domain. So this brings us to the end of question one. Let's continue to question two. Question two, abaca plants are found in the Philippines. The photograph shows a mat made from abaca plant fibers. This is the mat made from the plant fibers. They say plant fibers include xylem vessels. The photograph shows some xylem vessels as seen using a light microscope. So we can see the vessels like that. Then they say, a stain was added to the xylem before viewing using a microscope. Give a reason why it is usual to stain specimens in microscopy. Staining will increase contrast so that the structures can be seen more clearly under the microscope. Moving on. Here they say, explain how the arrangement of cellulose molecules and secondary thickening in xylem vessels contributes to the physical properties of the cell wall. Here they want us to focus on how the cellulose molecules are arranged, the role of secondary thickening in the xylem vessels, as well as its impact on the physical properties of the cell wall. We know that cellulose molecules are arranged into microfibers, and these microfibers have hydrogen bonds between them so that they can bond to each other. Also, microfibers are arranged in layers. You know each layer they arrange parallel, but the next layer is perpendicular to the previous layer. So that kind of arrangement creates a mesh-like structure. So here I say the microfibules are arranged in layers and each layer is perpendicular to the next, creating a mesh-like structure. Also, they contain calcium pectate, which holds together the microfibules. Lignification also occurs, making the xylem vessels impermeable to water. And that makes it easier for the xylem vessels to transport water across the plant. This brings us to the end of question two. Let's continue to question three. Question 3. A new vaccine has been developed that contains active messenger RNA. The flow diagram shows how this vaccine causes body cells to produce a new protein. The active messenger RNA used for the production of a protein is isolated. And then the active messenger RNA is enclosed in a liposome and injected into a patient. The active messenger RNA enters the body cells of the patient and the body cells secrete this protein. Part S says, the diameter of one spherical liposome was 75 nanometers. They want you to calculate the volume of this liposome using the formula volume is 4 over 3 times pi r cubed. Now we know from here that this is the diameter and therefore the radius should be half of that, which comes out to be 37.5 nanometers. So substituting this here, volume will be 4 over 3 times pi times the radius cubed. The answer I get was 220893 but they require us to write it in standard form. So my answer was 2.2 times 10 power 5 nanometer cubed. Moving on. Here they say, 
Active messenger RNA is formed after post-transcription modification of pre-messenger RNA. The structure of pre-messenger RNA produced from transcription is different from the structure of active messenger RNA. Compare and contrast structures of pre-messenger RNA and active messenger RNA. When they ask us to compare and contrast, we need to talk about the similarities as well as the differences. So for similarities, both are made up of nucleotides that contain phosphodiester bonds. Also, both are single-stranded. There are also matching exons in both with the stem base sequence. For the differences, pre-messenger RNA contains both introns and exons, while active messenger RNA only contains exons. Active messenger RNA may have a different order of arrangement of exons than the pre-messenger RNA. Because, you know, after post-transcription modification, the exons can be rearranged in a different order, so there is a chance that active messenger RNA is going to have exons arranged in a different order. So this brings us to the end of question 3. Let's continue to question 4. Question 4. The graph shows the changes in the DNA content of one cell during one cell cycle. So here we have the DNA content in one cell in arbitrary units. We also have the time in hours. From part J we can see the DNA content is the same, but for K it doubles so it means this is during interface when the DNA is replicated. In part M, the cell content is decreasing and that means the cell has divided. So they say in which part of the graph is DNA being replicated? Because replication leads to the doubling of the DNA content, K should be the region when replication occurs. We see it moves from 2AU to 4AU, so the answer should be a B. The next part says, in which part of the graph will the condensation of chromosomes be completed? In this region, that is where we're going to have prophase or the major part of mitosis, at least before the cell begins to divide, so we can say it's going to be region L, and therefore the answer should be a B. Next they say, centrioles are involved in spindle formation. Name the stage of mitosis when spindle fibers begin to form. They begin to form during prophase. The next part says, explain the role of the spindle in mitosis. Now, spindles are fibers onto which the centromere of sister chromatids bind, and this will allow the sister chromatids to be separated, meaning they will go into separate cells in order for each daughter cell to receive identical genetic material. Going down here, they say, draw a plant cell undergoing cell division after mitosis has just finished. This is how the plant cell is going to look just before it divides. It has a cell wall. There is a nucleus in each. And then there are these vacuoles in the middle through which the cell loss is going to form in order for the cell to divide fully. Moving on. Here they say the photograph shows a section through a rod tip as seen using a microscope. This is a structure of how it looks in a microscope. They say... Describe how to determine the mitotic index of this tissue. To determine the mitotic index, we need to find the number of cells that are actively going through mitosis. And then we also have to find the total number of cells. So here I said, you count the number of cells going through mitosis, and then count the total number of cells. Then you will divide the number of cells in mitosis by the total number of cells. And then you could multiply by 100. So this brings us to the end of question four, as well as to the end of this first part of the paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.